Hey guys, and welcome back. I know that a lot has changed. I won't even say a lot, but like as far as perspective, hair, a lot of things have transpired in the just a couple of months that I've been gone, but nonetheless, I am glad to be back and I'm glad to be talking to y'all. Today, I just briefly wanted to talk a little bit about my own testimony and how I ended up here. It was a short slash long journey, but nonetheless, like I just wanna get right into it. So to start, growing up, I've mentioned this before in another video, but I was a part of a single parent household. My grandparents were in the church, of course, and and we went with them almost every Sunday as a young child. And it came to this place where we started playing sports, such as basketball at the time. And we ended up having a lot of AAU tournaments and events. And initially, we were not that good. So we weren't winning all the time. And so we were able to still go to church on Sunday. And we would just be a little bit more tired than usual. And then I would say probably around the sixth grade, we actually actually started to build some chemistry as a team, as a organization, and the wins were not short at all. Like we were consistently making it to Sunday on the championship game, had a lot of medals and trophies, but with this now making it to Sundays, we just stopped going to church because we was like, you know, we got a tournament like game. Like it's not like we wanted to go anyway. And of course the thing to do would to be go with your team and bring home gold. So that happened for sixth grade all the way up until 11th grade. We just had sports on the weekends and it was easier to not go. Even when they would have like, you know, Mother's Day, Father's Day, a ch church events that you would attend, usually even if you never went to church. The most packed days I think is Easter, but that's is we didn't even go. And honestly, at that time I was very much okay with that. It's, <laughs> it was it was fine by me. And I remember when we did actually come back to my grandparents' church, one of the people in the church came up to us and made the comment that, you know, oh, y'all have been gone so long, I didn't think you would know who we were. And as a child, because this happened very young, so like the the minute we started winning basketball, I wanted nothing to do with church anymore because I'm like, this grown adult just came up to me and said something and I feel like she was talking very slick. And in my child's mind, like I told my mom, I'm like, listen, mom, you weren't there, but this lady said this, this, that, and the third to us. And she was like, okay, well, you don't have to go. So all this was made it easier to feel as if we didn't need to attend church. And it was easier to be like, you know what? We play sports anyway. So on Sundays, we'll be at a tournament probably out of town. It just makes sense. Now, it didn't make sense when it was a school year because during the school year, that's when AAU kind of pauses and you have your actual in-season school sports activities. And we, of course, participated in that, but there was we were not playing on Sundays. We had time to go, but it was just that initial church hurt or embarrassment, I'll say shame, even as a child that just kind of made it like, you know, that's not really a friendly place. That's not really a place that we want to go and fellowship with other people. I'll say for me, it became a mindset, even like as a teenager, like, oh, you don't really need to go to church. You can have church anywhere. Like I had no real understanding or relationship with God to stand on. So my understanding was not necessarily clear of who he was to me or purpose, life, all these things. And so even at the time, I remember one of the sermons that stuck out to me in my youth was the pastor was talking about, you know, when God sends the angel of death and he's like, everybody put blood on your door because I'm sending the angel of death and you'll lose your firstborn, this, this, that, and the third. And he, as he's preaching this and reading this from the Bible, I just remember sitting in the in the pew like, oh my gosh, tonight <laughs> we got to put the blood on the door. Like, <laughs> Y'all, I'm not trying to go out. I'm the firstborn. We can't, we cannot be slacking. And honestly, when I didn't see the blood on the door and I was thankful that I woke up the next morning, it wasn't really revealed to me. And now I'm kind of seeing the other, the importance of having a children's ministry and attending a children's ministry because I was like, who is this God? 
who is trying to take me out um just because there's not blood on the door like what <laughs> what am I supposed to do with this information and so we fast forward like through high school as I said, not really being a part of church or anything like that and going into college. So this was a recipe for, I don't want to say disaster because all glory belongs to God, like we're here now, but this was the recipe for a perfect storm, honestly. So I'll say during college, you have this freedom that you don't have as of course, a teenager in high school, you can make your own decisions, eat what you want, go where you want, do whatever your heart desires. And knowing carnality, knowing the fallen man, whatever your heart desires is not always the best thing. It is not always good. Of course, it's not always righteous and holy, but you want to do it because you don't know anything else. And it's your nature. You know nothing of the spirit. It's your soulish nature. And you, we have this thing of wanting to just please ourselves and living this max capacity to our detriment. I'll say that. So initially, um, I got to college and there was nothing outrageous in the beginning. Went to a few parties, went to a few kickbacks and things like that participated in edibles, participated in drinking all these things that were not something that I usually liked to do or even really wanted to do, but I felt that was the environment that we were in. So why not partake in this? It can't be that bad. And so as that began to emerge, I'll say that's when things kind of took a left turn. So my sophomore year of college, I ended up getting into a serious relationship. And this person, we spent a lot of time together. They really didn't have a relationship with the Lord either. So it was never a conversation that we had. And I know it, even in college we didn't really have anything to do on the like on a Sunday but we really never even talked about church or talked about anything really the relationship moved kind of fast and I'll say this because I'm a big advocate for practicing celibacy absent whatever it is just keeping yourself pure because when your mind is still learning there are so many things that you don't quite comprehend you don't really understand the effects of a premature sex life can have on you as a young adult, as an individual, just at any point. And so with this relationship being as it was, we spent a lot of time together, a lot of dates, a lot of activities and things like that. And so my emotions were so heightened towards this individual so much that I really didn't want to spend time with my family. I was like, forget my friends. Like I'm spending all my time with this person. It came to a place where now this person was my idol. I remember just seeing him in this light, like think like, oh no, he would never do something like that. I could, no, he wouldn't. And putting him on this pedestal of a perfect boyfriend at the time and just being so in lust, not in love, in lust with this individual. And it also, it didn't help that I didn't have a father. So just not being able to know the dynamics of a relationship, where you stand, the love of a father to even help you or keep you from, I don't want to say falling so head over heels, but getting so intertwined with another person that you lose yourself. And that is very much what I was beginning to do. And granted at the time, while I had hobbies and things that I enjoyed doing and even the partying and things like that, not necessarily all the hobbies were just good, but all those things that I like to do, the people that I like to spend my time with, it came to an end, an abrupt end. End. I don't think that it was intentional on either of our behalves, but it's something that just kind of happened when you don't have boundaries and you don't have structure in a relationship. And so I'll say one of the things like when it got towards the end, that three year mark, that four year mark, troubles in the waters started to emerge. I realized that the way we view family is completely different. We had different life goals, different things that we want to do in this world, even different locations 
locations. And at a point, I was willing to compromise everything that I wanted, the destiny that at the time I felt that I had, not in Christ, but what I was telling myself I needed to accomplish. I was willing to put that on the back burner to be in this relationship. Cause I'm like, this is love. <laughs> if this is love and this is wrong, I don't want to be right. And it just sent me into a place of isolating myself and not really having the means to seek counsel, not really having the means to form a bond or get to know myself on a deeper level and deeper realm. So of course, when this relationship ended, because relationships like those are going to come to an end, no matter how much you try to stop it, it is. And when it came to an end, my whole world went crashing down before my very eyes. It was right before my college graduation in 2020. And I remember for a week and a half, two weeks, I did not eat a single thing. I didn't want to talk. I remember getting in my car, driving from my college town to his town, knocking on the door like, we need to talk. What is this? Like, I ain't never felt like this. I feel at loss. We need to get back together. And hearing that person say no, knowing that so many times I tried to end the relationship and when I tried to end the relationship, that person was like, no, we're not doing that. And then the time where they decided to end it, it was final. I really didn't know how to cope with that, but I knew that my heart hurt. It hurt it more than I could even speak. And I realized like I had nobody to talk to about that. And I was left like in this is in the middle of the, the panoramic. And I'm sitting in my room in this in this college apartment by myself, not having anyone to talk to about that. And my family asked me, of course, like, would you want to come home? But I just did not want to be bothered. I just felt like if anything, I had to figure out this thing called life on my own. Like I had to pick up my own self. And I honestly, it sent me into a place of seeking answers. I needed to know why this happened. I needed to know what, who am I? Like there were so many questions because I had lost myself in a relationship that God did not ordain. And I was grasping at straws so much so that around this time I started to see like crystal videos on YouTube, crystal videos on Instagram. It wasn't really as popular as it is now, but at the time it caught my attention. I remember even getting on on Pinterest and just seeing like little buy these type of crystals for this or create this type of atmosphere with this manifest. Ooh. And I was like, you know, I think that'll do it. That's the solution. If there is a God, that's the solution. And so at that time, I remember I started going to little stores, buying crystals, buying incense, buying things to fill that void that had been left by that relationship. And as crazy as it sounds now, at that time, I felt like that was the answer. I'm like, you know, if I have this crystal, then that protects my heart. If I have this crystal, then that's clarity of mind. Not realizing the problem with crystals and all these things is the manipulation. Any form of manipulation is witchcraft. So in my right mind, I was manipulating myself thinking that these stones that are in the ground that could even protect themselves in the ground, that's why they got picked. I was thinking that these could protect me in every right, in every being that no longer would I suffer in life. And I was sadly mistaken, but we're we not even there yet. And so as I start to get these crystals, I start to manifest, get these vision, all these things, like just trying to be the God of my own life. That's essentially what I was doing. Having the answers come from me seeking the universe. I remember there was a time where I actually like sat on the floor and I was like, I'm going to try to meditate today. I'm going to speak to the universe and I'm going to have the universe speak to me and I'm going to come out a changed person. And so I sat on the floor and I asked to be opened up or something. I asked spirits of the world. I don't know. I was on some weird time and I asked that to happen. And so unbeknownst to myself, I was providing an invitation to dark spirits to be a part of my life, to latch on to me. And nobody tells you that stuff. They just tell you, get these, they're so pretty, do this. 
speak this not really realizing that your words your thoughts are a portal it's giving an invitation to like-minded spirits and so at that time i was attracting a lot of dark stuff on the outside it didn't look like that because you saw me i was back in the gym i was happy i was cooking i was doing all the things that i had been doing initially but in the midst of trying to find myself and i think a pastor talked about this the other day but he was saying like when you live a life like that your own payroll Sometimes you get paid every other week. Sometimes you get paid every week. Sometimes it's commission-based pay. Sometimes it's salary. And I was very much on like a commission. It was building up and my bonus pay was coming. <laughs> and so during this time, I remember just even speaking on my Instagram about crystals, telling people like, oh, these are so pretty. You should get this. And having myself like put crystals on my body and meditating on the ground, all this hoo-ha. And I know at that time I inspired other people to do it. They will not outright say it, but I know it. And it's something that I had to repent for later because I'm like, God, like I am so sorry. I didn't know that this is what this was about. So fast forward, I'm in this lifestyle of witchcraft and I graduate college. I ended up moving to Atlanta, Georgia, and I knew a couple of people from my hometown that had moved here as well. I had started working at a hospital and I had met other people who practiced with crystals and did small spells and speaking different things. And I, you know, that was just a part of the world that I was in. And so it came a point where every other weekend, even if I had to be up and be at work on the ne on Monday morning or Sunday morning, even at seven, the night before I had just stumbled in at 530 trying to get myself together. And there was this cycle of I didn't have anything else to do, but I was trying to regain and build this confidence that I had lost. So I partied a lot more, bar hopped a lot more, drank a lot more, did a lot more edibles until I became this person that I didn't even recognize. But I was okay with that because this persona that I had created was someone that could not be hurt. And I even like gave myself a nickname and I was going by Chet because it was a, a persona. It was protecting who I was at core and just providing this shield or this front between myself and everybody else that I was dealing with. And it didn't take long for me to actually get tired of the lifestyle that I had now become accustomed to because initially it's not something that I partook in anyway. And so I ended up when I was in the midst of leaving my job and going to another job that I felt would be a better environment. I said, you know, I'm just going to stop texting these people back. I blocked everybody and I was like, I just, I want to be alone. That's all I want is to be alone. And I ended up booking a trip to Daytona, Florida. And I booked this trip and I just got in my car and rode down there by myself and I just was like I'm gonna take this time to journal I'm gonna take this time to sober my mind and gain some sense of self back and I, at that time I was still very much doing crystals and stuff but the partying and things like that I was done with it so I had spent time on the beach by myself just enjoying the food the people and enjoying living again and knowing being around people who had no idea who I was and just getting to be at rest with that and so one of the days that I was down there, I was like, you know what? I need more crystals. So I go to this flea market because I had never been to a flea market before. And upon getting there, I find the parking. It's a beautiful like event. And honestly, at some point in the videos, I might post pictures here and there just talking about it or just showing what happened upon on this trip. But yeah, I found myself at a flea market and I was like, I, of course they have crystals here. I know they do. And so I actually ended up finding a vendor who had crystals she had spell books she had a lot of things and I was very inclined I gave her the crystals that I had and asked her like do you know what these are and bought some even like looked at a couple of spell books and I was listening to her talk about magic and just and in that time in that mind frame it made sense to me and I was like you know I'm not out here doing evil per se so I don't have to worry about that <laughs> and so I get my crystals I get whatever else I bought from the flea market and I put it in my bag and then I go back to my hotel and I go to the beach again and so nothing happened on this trip 
This trip was a beautiful experience. I'm still grateful for it to this day, but nothing happened. It was fine. I made it back safely. So I get back to Georgia and stuff hits the fan. And I'm like, okay. So my fish that I had acquired, because like I said, I was needing some sense of self. I was lonely. I bought a fish. I had a beta fish and I loved him to death. His name was Derkio. And when I got back from my trip, his health had declined significantly. And I'm like, what's wrong with my fish? Like I do water changes. like I'm supposed to. I watched all these videos. I made sure he has this type of food. What is going on? here so as I'm like unpacking I'm very much tending to my beta and I'm, I'm gonna look at some stuff I'm gonna go on Google I'm gonna find this medicine I'm gonna go and get it the next day so I lay my crystals out by his fish tank and I'm just like watching him and I end up going to sleep because I was off the next day I decide to go to PetSmart to get him some food and some medicine as I like and honestly that day I didn't even want to leave the house but I was like my fish he needs this I have to go. I leave the house. I go to the store. On my way back, a girl does an improper U-turn and hits my brand new car. I had never been in a car accident before and I just bawled my eyes out. I called my folks. I sat on the sidewalk waiting for the tow man and I just cried. I cried because I'm like, I worked so hard to get this car. I wasn't even going to leave the house today. All I was doing was getting medicine for my fish and I just could not fathom like I felt that I was on such a high how could this happen to me I haven't done anything wrong to anybody why is this happening to me and they took the car to the shop and I remember I knew some folks in my hometown that could fix the car or I thought they could fix the car and so we take it down there and it was a German car and so the things are not in the spots where people usually presume them to be and so that was a lot of back and forth between my hometown and Atlanta and then having to have a rental car so like everything that I had saved in my bank account had to spend it on my car literally had nothing and like every day I was depressed I was sad I was like I hate like it was a nice rental car but I hate this car it's not my car it's not what I bought it's not what I put my time and my my money into and then I'm sitting there like my fish was not getting any better at all my fish ended up dying and I had to flush him and it might not have been right but I didn't know what else to do with my 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 dead fish and every day Day, I mope and I mope and at this time I was like talking or entertaining people but I just had to take a step back because I'm like I, I don't even know what's going on right now so I ended up taking my car to the actual dealer who is a German dealer and they were working on the car and I'm sitting there just kind of with my head down with my iPad out writing some notes for class and I didn't want to be there and they came back and they told me like oh the parts won't be in this this that and the third and so I left I thought like I thought that was going to be the final day and I was going to have my car back and I left feeling so discouraged like I think that was a span of like a month or so where I just cried every day and I kept thinking why me like what did I do and so on that glorious day I'll say this that final day I go back to the dealership to pick up my car they were like and I at this time on before that I actually was like you know what all this stuff started happening when I brought back these Dagon crystals. I'm done with this. I don't want anything to do with this. And I threw them all away. I threw everything away that was pertaining to new age. I didn't want any parts of it. Unfollowed whatever I that needed to be done. I had renounced it. I was done. Still hadn't, I wasn't seeking God, but I just was like, whatever this is that I was doing, I don't want to do it anymore. And that was quite the battlefield. So the last day I go and I pick up my car, I'm sitting there and my head is down because I'm prepared for the worst. I, I'm just like, it hasn't been good thus far what what could ha what could possibly go wrong and this lady comes out of her office and she asked me how I was and I'm like you know I'm fine you know the candid aunt. I'm fine I'm well thank you for asking and she was like did you come in for a new car today and I was like no I'm actually just waiting on my car to be fixed they, they said it should be done this time around this is after like maybe three or four back and forth trips to this dealership and so 
she's like, you know, just come with me to my office. And I'm like, okay, that's weird. But I go and I go to her office and I sit down in her, in her, in the chair, like facing her and she's just talking to me and I'm just listening to her. And then the Lord leads her to start ministering and prophesying to me about relationships, about what I have been practicing, what I have been doing. And I kid you not, I, in that office, in that very public dealership, I am crying my eyes out. I am saying like, you know, yes, this has happened. Yes, this happened to me. Yes, I was doing this. I don't want to do it anymore. It was a very rectifying experience. I remember just thanking her for talking to me on behalf of the Lord, for prophesying, to for being a vessel, for being obedient to what God was calling her to do. So they came back after we had this talk and I'm like wiping my eyes and things like that. They come back out and they were like, ma'am, your car is ready. And I'm like, it's good to go. And they were like, yeah. It's it's good to go. You it's it's fine. We fixed everything. And so she was like, "Do you want a new car or do you want to go with the car you had?" And today I look at that decision is like, "Do you want to go back to the life that you knew or do you want to give God a shot? Do you want to give your walk with Christ a chance?" That moment when she said, that, "I was like, I really can't afford a new car right now, but I want it. I want a new car." And she takes me to her office. I end up getting a sweet deal on the, the brand new car, trading in my old car. And <laughs> I literally broke down with joy in that moment. I had so much joy not knowing this was just a small step into all that is to come. And <laughs> so as I'm having these tears of joy and just thanking the Lord and thanking God for even coming to me and meeting me at that moment, they pull the brand new car around. It's beautiful. It's bright red. And I'm like, yeah, the blood of Jesus like we that's how we rocking like that's how we ride it they pull the car around and they're like okay we're gonna go fill it up miss tucker and i'm like okay that's cool they go and get gas as i'm talking to the lady in her office the prophetess, I'm talking to her in the her office. I hear a loud crash. And so all everybody in the dealership leaves their respective places and runs to the front. The guy who was getting gas was like, you know, they ran the red light and hit me as I was coming back with the car full of gas. They hit me. And I'm looking because the brand new car that I was about to sign off on was destroyed. Not total, but it was destroyed. And I was like, you know, I still want a new car. They were like, we'll give you a rental since it was our mistake and I was like okay so me and her go back to the office and we're still talking about everything that happened and she was like no that's the enemy trying to have his last hurrah because he know that he lost one today and I was like well bring it on because I know where I want to be I know that I I, I know that I want to have a relationship with God and so we're sitting there and I was like you know my birthday is actually coming up in a couple of days I'm gonna go and get a cabin in the woods and I'm gonna spend time I want to know God like I want to know who it is that came and sought me on this day I want to know so for my 25th birthday I ended up getting a getaway cabin out in the mountains with just myself my bible that's it and I remember sitting on my bed just saying you know God I don't know anything about you I have no preconceived notion I know nothing I'm willing to receive everything that you have for me anything that you want to show me I won't doubt it I I won't I laid myself down to go to sleep that night and mm, <sighs> I had a great experience with the Lord. Will I talk about it in this video? No. In due time, if God allows, I will share that encounter. But it was something that changed my life. And I woke up that next morning and I called the prophetess and I said, I saw this. This happened for me. I was here. This, this, that, and the third. She explains to me the encounter and her daughter, we talk about it. And she was like, so what do you want to do? And on my bed that day, I sat there and I said, I want to give my life to Christ. I do. And they led me in the prayer in which I received the Lord and it has been an experience since. It is not something that I take for granted and even in the turmoil is still much better than being in the world and I'm grateful that God called me when he did because I was on a fast track to nowhere. I didn't know it but my spirit knew it and he came and he met me right where I was. And so with that being said, I think now it's approaching year two in Christ. Just Good Friday, 
this past April. I got baptized and I will put that video in here so you'll see. Um, I got baptized at Revelation Church, but it has been a blessing. And I pray that I get to share more of my journey and just God's move in my life as well as those around me with you. And so with that being said, you guys, just always be encouraged. Know that the Lord sees you, even in your sin, even in your disarray. He sees you. He wants you as you are. I didn't do any cleaning up. I didn't do anything. He found me where I was and made the change in my heart. Again, you guys, blessings to you and your family. Thank you for your time this evening, this morning, this night, wherever you're watching this. Thank you. I pray God meets you where you are, that he ministers to your soul to your spirit and that out of this life you get to know him you get to know the amazing and beautiful opportunity it is to know jesus and i'll see y'all in the next video bye bye